Tommy Tiernan's in studio. You caused trouble as a boy. You caused trouble in school. You brought rain to Cork. It's your fault. It's funny. I was I got a lift out of the taxi driver, you know, and I says, uh, is the rain down for the day? Ah, oh, this will be bad today, bad tomorrow, and then back to the usual shite on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> They're cork taxi drivers, so you can't pay them. <laughs> but to have to have good weather described as the normal shite. <laughs> you know when you get into taxis or stuff like that, and you meet people, do they expect you to be funny all of the time? Is there fierce pressure on you? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Sometimes they, no, not really. It's would you I was, feel I was, like saying, "Would you ever just shut up and leave me alone?" I wouldn't have that courage. You know, I often um, I was just thinking about the. Uh, coming down here for the interview for the breakfast show um, which is why I'm here is that why you're here the interviewing you. would you do yeah. breakfast radio well do you know what I was thinking I don't have the personality for it I could do a breakfast show if I was allowed to be grumpy a lot of the time <laughs> that like, would work for us yeah I, the, pay you huge money what really? would you need it's, well, it's, it's the notion of having to be optimistic and, and in a great mood first thing in the morning yeah. if you can handle grumpy <laughs> Grumpy morning radio. <laughs> they say some people are morning people. You're not one of them. I'm not even an evening person. I'm. I'm <laughs> What part of the day is good for you? My dreams. I peak in my dreams. <laughs> I'm the height of crack in my dreams. Oh, my God. I saw, <laughs> you down, I saw you down in West Cork. I only saw it a few weeks ago on television. Yeah. It was fantastic. Thank you. We, got, we were blessed with that. You know, it's, a, it's such, the outdoor. Yeah, the, outdoor. the Glebe. You know, such a wonderful, natural amphitheatre there. And theoretically, it shouldn't work because the off... Uh, always say for comedy what you need is a low roof you know so like to hell with the rules <laughs> so like a cupboard or something like that would work <laughs> but the fa- but th- there's something about that venue there must be some kind of magic in the air there there was also uh, now so out in West Cork you'd be strange de- down there well you'd be dealing with kind of uh, refugees of a kind of a classier sort you know kind of bohemian en- English hippies and stuff like that yeah, yeah, yeah. the smell now now I can't take all the credit for the laughter because the smell of hashish <laughs> washing down from the hill was phenomenal there were stoned sheep walking around <laughs> West Cork the birds were stoned that evening um, even the people who didn't want to be stoned next to them were stoned that evening <laughs> good good for them so no matter what you did you made them laugh yeah and it was uh, uh, it was an amazing uh, it's an amazing little venue that you know uh, but you do that over two nights did you we filmed it over two nights and we got blessed with kind of identical weather, weather on, and the light on both nights it's beautiful yeah it's um, it's amazing I've done uh, about eight or nine DVDs done all together now and half of them were filmed in Cork you started in Cork Did the, uh, well my first ever gig now my first, actually, ever gig, first ever gig first ever gig was in the City Limits Comedy Club 1995 what was that like it was thrilling I got 65 quid and the ride <laughs> <laughs> that's not the ride back to the taxi or anything to the hotel <laughs> I couldn't believe it I thought show business sign me up I'm ready let's do this thing <laughs> Um, so I was staying in a hotel and it, I, I was staying in a hotel which has since uh, closed down uh, just off Patrick Street I won't name it uh, but I'm sure you, you all know no, it actually we know it uh, named after named, ah lads cause, cause I was going to say something libelous <laughs> somebody told me yesterday whether this is true or not I don't know somebody told me yesterday that before it shut down you could rent it by the hour <laughs> you can rent any oh no I don't think you could do that I oh don't really know. I don't think you could do that I know that there was female mud wrestling in there for a spell <laughs> look at his his hands drops, his head drops into his you missed that <laughs> really yeah. female mud wrestling that's right <laughs> that's in the old nightclub in there the rest of it I don't know anything about about. The depravity, isn't it wonderful? <laughs> but listen, gorgeous depravity. T- I gotta talk to you about this television show. I mean, was that your oh, yeah. idea? Yeah, it was, yeah. Um We won't know anything about the guests before that. and God knows you didn't know some of the guests. Didn't know some of them, so they have to be up for the crack of it too, you know. Um there was I just thought that Vogue Williams was funny. You had a notion who she was. What a fine specimen of a woman but when, she is. But now. when she came out what, she's, what did you, and she's very intimidating too in the flesh. She's actually she's tall. She is. <laughs> you you did look intimidated, but you looked intimidated because you didn't know what was going on, is it? Yeah, but she but she's so she's a wonderful manner of Vogue. You know, uh, I think if I had known stuff about her beforehand, I might have been slightly prejudiced. I only found out afterwards that she was married to Westlife. But where have you been living, like? I live in Galway. Oh, oh, come on. How come you don't I know read, these? I read the Connacht Tribune. That's what, that's it. <laughs> she doesn't make the Connacht Tribune regularly, you know? Hardly. I thought she'd not pick up the sun or the she star. She might have been at the Balanced Low Horse Fair once ago in a photograph. <laughs> <laughs> Taken on the carousel. That's the height of it. Um, so I, I I just don't tune into all that, you know. Like if Leonard Cohen walked on, God be good, I would have known who he was. Or Red Hurley. Do you know? <laughs> or possibly Richie Kavanagh. <laughs> hey, fuck all do, fuck all three. <laughs> you know, but Vogue, I hadn't clue of her um, uh. but it's the uh, I just I, I was in I was touring around England at the time and um, 
I was in bed after a show one night in Hull. Of all places. And the idea came to me, I just started laughing. I just started laughing at the idea of it. Now, I'm a man who would, uh, I think I'm obliged to put myself under pressure. Uh, I have some sort of like I, I would never ever do my homework it's a faulty gene I think it is you know because I, I would never do my homework when I was in school because I, I must have enjoyed the pressure of going into school at half eight trying to get the homework done for the first two classes and during the first two classes copy the homework for the second three classes you copied other people's yeah so I just I, I you so, th- it. there's something in me that thrives on pressure or it's a form of self-loathing you know that I put myself in like the You're notion a masochist I think so um, I like for Lent now I had, a, I had a major turning point this year with Lent um, instead of putting myself under pressure uh, <laughs> what I decided to do was to take up stuff so I've I've taken up chocolate <laughs> for the next 40 days new to you like chocolate well, it's a new to, experience yeah just it? to treat myself instead of this kind of punishment and just to go to hell with it now I might even start drinking again you know it'd be good to yourself I think so you know um, so the the TV show uh, pa- there is a phenomenal amount of pressure in it that you can't prepare um, well what would you do like you, you can't prepare no so you, you, what you're trying to do is get yourself in the right state of mind so you have to uh in fact, meditation is involved quite a lot, you know. So you, I have to meditate for a few months before each episode. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. I swear to God, it's it's about being in the right state of mind, um, where whatever happens, you're able to go along with it, and that's not easy, cultivated, or always at hand. Did no one else in the world ever do this type of program before? No, that's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, I, you'd need a. I was trying to think of who else could that I would know that could do it. I think Frank Skinner could do it. Frank's very good at that type of stuff. Somebody uh, said you're the future of talk television. I mean, and I don't want to be bigging yeah. up your ego. God knows it's big enough as it is. But yeah, the Christy Dignam, the Christy Dignam <laughs> episode was beautiful. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? That was I mean, um, that was moving. I mean, yeah. it's a, is it easy to move a funny guy? Is it? No, but I'm very sentimental. I would, I would spend a lot of time uh, crying, crying privately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but not laughing publicly. I'm crying <laughs> privately. <laughs> Like right, that's, so. all, that's all I do at home is weep like the, the kids don't even know my name they just know this hairy man comes back to the house Monday to Wednesday and cries in the corner of the kitchen brings money and weeps and, and the red haired lady who they call Mammy is very nice to him <laughs> <laughs> but why the tears hairy man why the tears um, so uh, no that was an, that was an amazing moment I thought that um John Connors, the the, the traveller, I thought his that was great. his singing. And you I knew him though. Never, I met. I did a gig with him years uh, earlier on this year. But I mean, I even though I might know who they are when they walk around the corner, I have no idea who's going to walk around the corner. Yeah, yeah. And one of the things I asked for in the show was I said I said no comedians and uh, nobody that I Why? know. Because I've done a chat show with a comedian before where I was the guest and, and the comedian was the host and it can, can turn into a very kind of competitive, almost like two piranhas. Uh, Who's better than the other? Yeah, and there's no, you know... So when, when Russell Howard came on, I was very conscious of, you know, sitting back and letting him spread his wings if he wanted to. Um, so they, they were the two things I asked you for. Knew, I mean, you had Darcy on. You knew Ray Darcy. I knew you know, Ray, was... yeah. And he was generous as well. Ray was good. You know, Ray doesn't like being interviewed. Um, but I, I realised halfway through the interview that he had made a connection with me and he was prepared to talk, you know. Um, so they have to be up for that. When but are you into show. doing more of that now? Absolutely, yeah. Really? Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, Television? I'm, no, of that particular show. Like Just I, that show? Yeah. I got asked to do a show this morning in Los Angeles and I said no to it. So it's not, I'm not addicted to Why television. would you do that? The American market, are you nuts? I'm not interested in the American market. Why? What's the point like? There's about 50 million Irish out there. You, so what like? I mean, you know what I mean? They all pay money to come see you. Yeah, and uh, where will I be? Stuck in some fancy hotel in Los Angeles with fine looking whores draped around me I mean who wants that who well, wants forget that forget about the fine looking whores but all the rest that comes with it surely no, surely you I have, no, I have no interest in it I, am, I have much more of an interest in an, uh, an organic life so for me to leave the house of a Thursday to drive down to Cork for shows and drive home Sunday morning that's a normal life to me does money not motivate you at all then no just uh, enough to get by uh, it uh, no I, I make enough to pay my bills but I don't, I don't make much more than that. You're so, as much of the hippie as the ones down in West Cork then, aren't you? Well, I'm a hippie, but I spent a long time on the dole. Uh, and I first signed on the dole actually in Cork in uh, 1988 and was so thrilled at the notion of getting money. Something for nothing. Money for nothing. And not only did you get money for nothing, you had to promise not to do anything. 
And I thought, I could live here. I had to sign a piece of paper every week on, I swear to God, Mother, I won't lift a finger between now and next Tuesday. You have my word on that. Um, oh, so I think any of us are in, in the situation where if you make enough to pay your bills and enough for, uh, you know, a pint or a cup of coffee with a friend, that's about as much as anybody, anything Anything more than that? No flash car, no villa down in Spain kind of thing. I have a flash car, but I got a great advice from a priest. I got this second-hand uh, BMW 7 Series. Fine, big, base of a car. And a priest gave me this wonderful advice. He says, Tommy, the first thing you should do when they get that car is scratch it. Because <laughs> then you won't be as attached to it. <laughs> and I did. I took a big, not on purpose now, but I took a big lump out of the side of it. And I kind of, I don't know, now if I crash it, I couldn't give a rat's arse. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So I, I think if you become attached to those things, you're in trouble. It's great to have BMW is a fine car to be driving, you know. Uh, but if you get attached to it, you're kind of screwed. Yeah. So I'm in the position where uh, I have huge debts. So the money that I make, which is, I make a lot of money, but I don't see any of it. It kind of moves... <laughs> It moves behind me. You know it's there somewhere, but yeah, you never well see it. But it's going from, from my bank account into some AIB bank account. I don't really see it, but I know that there's enough there to keep me out of prison <laughs> for the moment. As long as you can stay funny, but not go yeah. to Los Angeles. Yeah, so I, and, I, and I, I have no interest in going to LA. I love, I tell you where I love touring. What did you turn down? It was a television uh, thing on Comedy Central. I love touring Europe. I love it. What about uh, Dancing with the Stars? If old Desi Boy can do it? Oh, look, look, if I had Des, Bish- Des Bishop's body, I'd, I, I'd, <laughs> be, d- I'd be dancing with Polish young ones too. But I <laughs> I don't. I am I would be... I'm not at the Des Cahill end of things, but... But, say, some the, but you know what they said? There was a lot of people who refused to go on it last time mm. and they're chomping at the bit to get on the next one. You know, now they've seen how successful it is, they're all going to want to be on it. Is it successful? I, I don't know. I've only seen bits yeah, of it. Yeah, I don't know. Um... Uh, I think you'd be funny on it, though. Ah, uh, yeah, but you know that I no. It's I wouldn't watch it, so I wouldn't go on it. <laughs> do you know? Um, but I was going to say about tour, touring Europe. Yeah. And what I like, well, I'm much more interested in touring Europe than in touring Australia or Canada or America or places like that. When you're walking around Europe, it's so exciting because you know, at any moment, on the streets of Europe, the fella. Standing beside you could explode. <laughs> and that's so exciting. You are joking me. That is that's not most, even funny. That's the most thrilling experience a man could have. To know that the man beside you could just... <laughs> it adds an edge to the day. You that, better believe it. That you not in a nice way. <laughs> it's thrilling though. I've, I Genuinely, I was doing some shows in Paris recently. And I found the danger there to be... Exciting, and I don't mean that in a. I'm not trying to cheapen anything, but I just find the Europe is a city is a is a continent on edge at the moment in a sense, and I find that exciting, you know. Uh, and I don't mean that. In, I was in the that, tubes in London about you know, three weeks ago with my son, and uh, I have to tell you, I was very alert and nervous. Uh, I didn't find it f- clearly. It wasn't exciting. I was worried. yeah. I was worried. I, I think uh, yeah. I, I just find I find you. I think because the culture in Europe is so old. Um, I find it really interesting to be there. I find old cultures interesting, which is probably why I don't find Canada and Australia interesting, um, because their old cultures are oppressed. You know, you can't get in touch with Red Canada or Black Australia. Mm. You know, they're marginalised and you know and drunk. Mm. Um, and, but it's old Irish culture is here. You know, old European cultures there. Old English culture is there. So I find find touring those places. Uh, very heartening and rewarding. I love yeah, it actually. Yeah, you know? yeah. Is there any? I mean, is there any areas that you don't that you don't delve into? I mean, clearly you 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 have no problem mocking terrorism or terrorist activity or, or the church or yeah, taking the Mickey quite literally. For sure, that's your, sex. your your job, I suppose, as a comedian is to uh, is to provide some type of light relief for all the serious things in the world. You know, so you address those things. I I wouldn't never see myself as a controversial comedian at all I think that you can make controversy out of what any comedian says you can steal a little snippet and go this is scandalous but I think people like in the opera house last night you know you go to areas 
because you're full of mischief and that's the kind of the contract of depravity you have with the audience do you know in advance where you're going with it is it uh, not all not all of the bits no uh, but you trust it's about trusting your own mischief and trusting that your mischief uh, is good natured so it's good natured mischief people would sense for me that I don't have a bad heart or there isn't a bad bone in my body but they also kind of say well, for while he's on uh, we won't take things seriously yeah. we won't get nobody gets up and walks out kind of no, uh, I I think I've had that once in the past fifteen years, and it may have been a toilet break. <laughs> <laughs> You're not quite sure, <laughs> but I, that that never happens, really. You know, so um, I my reputation for being controversial is greatly uh, exaggerated. For sure, it's it's bigger than the actuality of the show. You know, which isn't I don't think controversial at all. Yeah, you know? yeah. So yeah. Tonight's the second night in the opera house, isn't it? Doing four, and then we're back in the summer for uh, a marquee. Yeah, which is you great. didn't do the marquee for a while, so it's good to be back doing for it. For years. Well, my bank manager Just suggested it. <laughs> <laughs> Might be an idea to do a 6,000 seater, is it? So the chief of the AIB said, Tom, things are going well, but you know, come on, for safety's sake, I'd do a marquee if I was you. <laughs> so you're back in the marquee on June 24th. Yeah. It's a great gig, great feeling. I love it, it's fantastic. It's um, uh, to feed off that kind of energy. Do you know what you're going to do then? I mean, it's way too soon. I'd have stories that I know I'm going to tell, but you want to make each night individualistic and so I had a fantastic afternoon yesterday I got it was in doing a show in the college you know for the students and I loved talking to them um, and it was an improvised uh, half hour or an hour or something like that uh, it was great so you could bring that level of play it's about play mm. um, and finding uh, enough things to play with each night is the, is the key to it I think you, know, so. you got to stay sharp though You've got um, to stay sharp, don't you? have to stay fit and healthy. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, you could probably knock... If you started going... started losing your mind, that would probably be... You could probably knock a bit of crack out of that for a year or two. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people would say, is he taking the piss here or is he actually slowly <laughs> losing it? <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'll knock a mile or two out of dementia when it arrives, but <laughs> get your You're tickets quick. for a little while. <laughs> yeah. I'll work it for as long as I can. Fair play to you. you. Know. How long you had, what, you say you started, what, 88? Uh, no, that was when I moved to Cork. My that was first, first signed on the door. Yeah, my first professional gig was in City Limits Comedy Club in the winter of 1995. Get away. I got 65 quid, stayed in the Victoria Hotel, and uh, I was blown away by the romance of it. So I'm doing it now. What's that, 22 tw years. 22 years, yeah. Wow. So... Uh, you still go back to the comedy club? Oh, I still go back to these limits and I, and I, I may, may very well be back there in the next year or so. It's a fantastic club. And we recorded Crooked Man there, which was the one before Brilliant. The one in the Glebe, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it was great. No, it's a fantastic club. I love it. So more television then. Is there another city? More series chat show, then? for sure. More chat show. Uh, I've auditioned for a part in The Angelus. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> they were holding auditions. Uh, oh, that would be good, actually. What oh, did yeah. they get you to do? They want me to feed the gardening, is it? No, uh, feeding a swan. <laughs> and looking mystically uh, up into the sky. <laughs> Pensively looking off into When the, the bells go, you just go, where is that noise coming from? <laughs> just to look around. So please, God, you see me in that uh, before the end of the year. All right. Well, you listen, know. you always put smiles on everybody's faces. If you're into um, a breakfast show gig, there's one going here. So um, give, leave a copy of your resume when you're leaving, all right? <laughs> Will do. See what we can do. Good morning, cock. Good luck, Tommy. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to be very bold and give away some tickets for the market. Please do. All Please right, do. my friends. So open the phone lines on that one, lads, and away we go. We have some tickets for Live at the Marquee. Tommy Tiernan plays Live at the Marquee on Tell Saturday, what? the 24th an of an June. Idea. If people can guess my middle name, they can get the tickets for the Marquee. Tom oh, were you christened Tommy or Thomas? Thomas. Thomas. I th Probably John or something. No, no, John. No, no, no. John you're, Thomas. You're on, the half, you're on half the right track there with the John Thomas. Half the right track. Okay. Half the right track. Let's do that. Make sure you tell me before you leave. I will, of course, yeah. Okay. Tommy Tiernan's middle name. one 104 106 Get dialing.